Hello, Mrs H here. Transpiration is the evaporation of water vapour from the leaves. Most of the water vapour lost by transpiration is through stomata. Stomata are tiny openings or pores usually found on the lower surface of leaves. Here we can see the cellular detail of a leaf. Here is one pore and one pore would be called a stoma and you would use the word stomata when you're talking about more than one stoma. These tiny openings, stomata, allow carbon dioxide into the leaf for photosynthesis. But while these stomata are open for gas exchange, water vapor can evaporate from the leaf and this evaporation is called transpiration. This is what stomata look like if you're using a light microscope. You can do this really easily at school by putting a small patch of colorless nail varnish on the underside of a leaf, letting it dry and then peeling it off using sellotape. Stick the sellotape to a slide and you have an imprint of the stomata. You can see that each stoma is surrounded by a pair of cells and these pairs of cells are called guard cells. And here you can see how the higher magnification and higher resolution enable us to see the stomata and guard cells much more clearly with an electron microscope. It is the guard cells that control the opening and closing of the stomata. We are looking at an open and closed stoma. When the stoma is open, it is because the surrounding guard cells have a high water concentration in their vacuoles. So the guard cells are turgid and that causes the stoma to open. The stoma is closed when the guard cells have little water in them, so they become flaccid and they close the stoma. Guard cells have a thicker inner cell wall, which is less flexible than the outer cell wall. And it is this difference in flexibility that causes the cells to bulge in this way when the guard cells are turgid and therefore opening the stoma. How does water move from the roots to the leaves? Water molecules will move into the roots by osmosis from the soil and then from cell to cell by osmosis until they reach the xylem vessel. And then water molecules will move up the xylem vessel towards the leaves. Then the water molecules will move by osmosis from cell to cell in the leaf. Some of this water might be used for photosynthesis, which is why plants need water, and some of that water may evaporate into the spongy mesophyll space and then out of the stoma or stomata by diffusion. This continuous movement of the water molecules from the roots to the leaves is called the transpiration stream. Transpiration is important because water is needed for photosynthesis, the minerals that are dissolved in water can also be transported around the plant with the water. Water is needed to help the cells to stay turgid, which is important to keep the plant upright and prevent it from wilting. And the evaporation of water from the leaves help to cool the plant down. There are different factors that can affect transpiration rate. Some can speed it up and some can slow it down. For GCSE, we will focus on four main factors, light intensity, temperature, humidity, which is the moisture in the air surrounding the plant, and air movement or wind speed. Higher light intensity increases transpiration rate because there are more stomata open for photosynthesis. A higher temperature will increase the rate of transpiration, increasing the rate of evaporation from the leaf so that the water vapour concentration gradient increases between the inside and the outside of the leaf. And the water molecules will have more kinetic energy, so will be moving around more quickly, leading to faster diffusion. The higher the humidity, the slower the rate of transpiration because there will be a smaller water vapour gradient between the inside of the leaf and the outside of the leaf. And if there's no gradient, there will be no diffusion, so no transpiration. Air moving outside of the leaf will carry away the water vapour that has just diffused out and this increases the water vapour concentration gradient, therefore increasing the rate of transpiration. So a quick summary, the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of transpiration, the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of transpiration, 
the higher the humidity, the lower the rate of transpiration, and the higher the wind speed, the higher the rate of transpiration. I've also made a video that covers how to investigate transpiration rate using a potometer, and there are also some exam questions to try. Thanks for watching, good luck with your revision, and see you in the next video.